morning and welcome back to the lecture series on narrative mode in fiction. We are discussing science fiction and today we are going to talk about science uh, and cinema. So, we see uh, science fiction that has evolved in uh, cinema. We were talking about how uh, from the literary space science fiction has moved to cinema and it has uh, made its own position, an important position within the field of uh, cinema studies. Before 1930s, uh, science fiction films began to make their appearance very early in the history of uh, movie production uh, during the silent film era. In 1902, George Milius released Le Voyage dans la Lune, the first major film of the science fiction genre. Inspired by the novels of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, it portrays a journey to the moon in a spacecraft uh, launched by a powerful gun. So, this movie's uh, space travel plot, formalist visuals and innovative uh, spatial effects influenced uh, the future sci-fi films. Metropolis was one of the most uh, expensive silent films that was ever made. In 1910, Shelley's novel Frankenstein was brought to the film medium, which was also one of the early mergers of uh, science fiction and horror. Although only 16 minutes in length, the film succeeded in producing uh, a suitably dark mood and would be remade several times in the future. Another such horror movie, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, was released in 1913. An early epic film that introduced underwater filming was the production of The 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in 1916, uh, which was based on the novel by Jules Verne. The 1920s uh, saw distinctly uh, uh, different forms of science fiction films being produced in America and Europe. The European filmmakers employed the fictional elements and predictive aspects of science fiction with films uh, such as Metropolis uh, in 1926 and Die Frau im Mond in 1929, both from Germany. Uh, on the other hand, one sees that Hollywood embraces plots that are based on action sequences. So, movies uh, during the 1930s provided an escape from the poverty of the Great Depression and it was during this era that filmmaking experienced a golden age. Movies uh, possessed a soundtrack now and the extreme uh, physical expression of the silent era was replaced by dialogue. The films were focused on the actors rather than the still primitive special effects. So, an exception was the 1933 release of King Kong, which included scenes of the giant ape battling biplanes um, uh, atop the Empire State Building. So, most of the science fiction uh, films focus on human drama instead of aliens, uh, space travel or disasters. So, influenced by Metropolis, the 1930 release of Just Imagine was the first feature length science fiction film by a US studio. Uh, however, the film was an expensive flop and no studio after it would produce a feature length science fiction film at least until the 1950s. The British uh, produced Things to Come in 1936 along with Metropolis were some of the most influential films of the early period which used special effects in order to evoke spectacle. Uh, however, we have to remember that Things to Come was a failure at the box office. The 1930s decade also witnessed the rise of serial movies, uh, most notably in the form of the various uh, Flash Gordon films as well as the quasi science fiction, Dick Tracy and others. These were generally somewhat mediocre, uh, these, these were generally somewhat mediocre efforts at uh, deploying 
common ideas such as the mad scientist, various super tech gadgets and plots for world domination. So this decade saw the release of The Invisible Man in 1933 and uh, new versions of Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In the 1940s with uh, Second World War dominating the globe, new, uh, you know, few science fiction in the 1940s with the Second World War dominating the globe, few science fiction films were released and several of those um, were uh, also spreading war propaganda. Among them uh, were, uh, you know, among them uh, Dr. Cyclops is an example, Dr. Cyclops that was uh, made in 1940. During the 1950s, the science fiction genre finally began to come into its own. The large increase in science fiction literature during this time was reflected in the quantity of science fiction films that were being produced. The hydrogen bomb caused uh, the hydrogen bomb caused a renewed interest in science. And in 1950, in the widely publicized uh, Destination Moon, the American public uh, got their first glimpse of space travel uh, on a more sophisticated level than one had seen in Flash Gordon's trip to Mars back in 1938. So, we had a, a series of films, we can see the day the earth stood still in 1951 directed by Robert Wise, then Howard Hawks's The Thing in 1951 with their contrasting views of first contact being uh, created. So, a notable producer of this period was uh, George Powell, who was responsible for Destination Moon uh, produced in 1950. Uh, when Worlds Collide, it came out in 1951. The Time Machine, it uh, was released in 1960. The War of the Worlds in 1953. And the pseudo documentary of Manned Space Exploration, Conquest of Space, which came out in 1955. So, beginning in this decade, uh, Ray Harry Hawson began to use stop motion animation for both science fiction and fantasy films. His work appeared in films such as The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, uh, which was uh, released in 1953, Earth versus the Flying Saucers, released in 1956, and 20 Million Miles to Earth, released in 1957. Apocalyptic themes were popular in science fiction films during the Cold War era. The 1950s witnessed the emergence of the monster movie trend, uh, driven by the anxieties and the paranoia of the emerging Cold War, uh, which began with Howard Hawks' The Thing and the success of The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Other major films in the science fiction horror genre in this decade include them, uh, you know, in 1954, Invasion of the Body Snatchers in 1956, and the coldly realistic On the Beach in 1959. Other important films that are now considered classics were released in the mid 1950s, notably This Island Earth in 1955, which was the first film to show interstellar travel and also Forbidden Planet in 1956, which was an inspiration for Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek. So, the 1950s were also uh, the dawn of the space age as humans had begun to venture in outer space and a number of films from this period uh, reflected uh, a fear of the consequences of humans going out uh, into the space. Among these were The Angry Red Planet, uh, released in 1959, First Man into Space in the same year, and It, The Terror from Beyond Space in 1958, uh, which is also considered as a precursor to the film Alien. Another popular theme uh, from this period was, uh, you know, movies centering flying saucers, which reflected the prevalence of UFO sightings. One of the best known of these uh, was Earth versus the Flying Saucers, which came out in 1956 with special effects by 
Ray, by Ray Harryhausen. Uh, in the later years of the 1950s, the major American studios limited themselves to adaptations of classics by Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. Additionally, apart from uh, War of the Worlds, uh, these included 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Journey to the Center of the Earth. One of the most significant movies of the 1960s was 2001, A Space Odyssey, directed by Stanley Kubrick and written by Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke. This movie was groundbreaking in the quality of its visual effects, its uh, realistic portrayal of space travel and in the epic and transcendental scope of its story. Science fiction movies that followed uh, Space Odyssey uh, would enjoy increasingly larger budgets and more improved uh, special effects. So, 2001 Space Odyssey uh, was not the only major science fiction film in the 1960s. The same year it was released, audiences were also thrilled by Planet of the Apes, which uh, led to four uh, sequels and a television series altogether. Earlier in the 1960s, Fahrenheit uh, 451 was a social commentary on the freedom of speech and government restrictions. So, Kubrick's uh, Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Warring and Love the Bomb merged political uh, satire with comedy while the chilling Lord of the Flies portrayed the fragility of civilization. The adaptations of H.G. Wells kept coming uh, with filmic adaptations of The Time Machine and First Men in the Moon. The science fiction film ultimately went where no human had gone before with a uh, Ursula Andrews were venturing inside the human body in Fantastic Voyage, which came out in 1965, and uh, Jane Fonda displaying her sleek physique in the campy Barbarella. So, while not uh, strictly following the science fiction tropes, uh, the James Bond movies also include a lot of science fiction gadgetry. Now, the 1970s era, which witnessed manned uh, trips to the moon, saw a resurgence of interest in the science fiction film. The genre had gone into a small decline with the availability of the television during the 1950s. Star Wars and uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which were both released in 1977, contained a type of mystical element uh, which had first appeared in 2001, A Space Odyssey. And the space discoveries of the 1970s created a growing sense of marvel about the universe uh, that was reflected in these films. The early 1970s saw the continued theme of paranoia with humanity under threat from ecological or technological adversaries uh, of its own creation. Notable films from uh, this period include Silent Running, which focuses on ecology, uh, the sequels to Planet of the Apes, uh, which uh, focuses on man versus evolution, Westworld, which deals with man versus robot, THX 1138, which deals with man versus the state, the Stanley Q, and then we have Stanley Kubrick's uh, A Clockwork Orange, which uh, talks about man versus brainwashing. So, the conspiracy thriller film was a popular staple uh, during this period where the paranoia of uh, plots by the government or corporate entities had replaced the uh, communist enemy uh, which had pervaded the uh, 90s, 1950s. Uh, so, the films that were talking more about uh, the government or corporate entities include Alien in 1979, Capricorn uh, 1 in 1977, Invasion of the Body Snatchers in 1978, The Day of the Dolphin in 1973, Soil and Green in 1973, and finally Future World in 1976. The slow paced Solaris that was made by Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh, and released in 1972, uh, had been remade into a much shorter film by Steven Soderbergh in 2002. So, 
So the science fiction comedy of the 1970s included Woody Allen's A Sleeper made in 1973 and uh, Dan O'Bannon's Dark Star made in 1974. In 1979, the three uh, memorable science fiction films appeared. One is Star Trek. So the motion pictures brought the much loved television series to the big screen for the first time. Then we have uh, Alien. Uh, you know, create a spectacle through the screen monster and uh, time after time pitted uh, A.G. Wells against Jack the Ripper um, and it had an excellent script written by Nicholas Mayer. So, the 1980s and later period saw the growth of animation as a medium uh, for science fiction films. This was particularly successful in Japan where the anime industry saw the production of films such as Akira in uh, 1988 and Ghost in the Shell uh, made in 1995. Uh, however, animated science fiction films such as Light Years uh, made in 1988, The Iron Giant made in 1999 and Titan A made in 2000 did not draw a significant viewing audience. They performed uh, in a very middling fashion, in a very, uh, they were not extraordinarily uh, remembered and received by the audience. Uh, however, anime has gradually gained a cult following, and from the nineteen, uh, from the mid nineteen nineties onward, its popularity had uh, its popularity has been steadily uh, expanding worldwide. In nineteen eighty two, Blade Runner had a disappointing uh, box office sales. And uh, however, the film later gained status as a cult classic. Uh, following the huge success of Star Wars, sci-fi became bankable and each major studio uh, rushed their available projects into production. So, uh, consequently, Star Trek was born as a movie franchise that continued uh, all through the 1980s and 1990s. So, Ridley Stock's Alien established a visual styling of the future that became dominant in uh, science fiction films through its uh, sequels and uh, through Stock's uh, Blade Runner. Steven Spielberg's E.T. the Extraterrestrial became one of the best loved films of all times and it also was a box office hit. The strongest contributors uh, to the genre during the second half of the decade uh, where James Cameron and uh, Paul Verhoeven with the Terminator and uh, Robocop entries. During the 1990s, the film uh, The Matrix reflected a more postmodern dystopian worldview of the cyberpunk genre. The emergence of the World Wide Web and the cyberpunk genre during the 1990s uh, spawned several internet themed movies uh, for example both uh, the lawnmower man 19, made in 1992 and virtual city made in 1995 deal with threats to the network from a human computer interface then we have total recall which was made in 1990 and johnny mnemonic in 1995 uh, which had memories of their main actors modified by a similar interface uh, and uh, the matrix in 1999 created a virtual prison for humanity. The internet also provided a ready medium for movie fandom who could more directly support or uh, conversely criticize such media franchise film series as Star Trek and Star Wars. Both Armageddon made in 1998 and Deep Impact made in 1999 used the threat of a mass impact with the earth. So, Independence Day is a 1996 film uh, which recycled the 1950s alien invasion movie showing uh, all consuming aliens. Uh, advances in genetic science were also featured in the Jurassic Park uh, which was made in 1993 and the slow-paced uh, Gattaca made in 1997.
So, with the progression of the decade, computers played an increasingly important role in both the addition of special effects and the production of films. In the first decade of the 21st century, sci-fi films seem to turn away from uh, space travel, uh, where, whereas fantasy predominated. So, except for Star Trek and Star Wars films, the only films uh, set off Earth which appeared in the first half of the 2000s uh, include the uh, include mission to Mars in 2000 which was poorly received and then serenity uh, made in 2019 which was a continuation of Joss Whedon's television series uh, Firefly originally aired in 2002. On the other hand uh, we see fantasy and superhero films flourishing um, as did earthbound sci-fi and for the first time a fantasy film the lord of the rings uh, the return of the king made in 2003 had won an oscar for the best picture so by the middle of the decade the theater audience had begun had begun to decline and this was reflected in the numbers attending the sci-fi movies that were being released during this period. So we have to stop our lecture here today. I will meet you again with another round of discussions with a new module in another lecture. Thank you so much.